What's up, guys? Another Bible study, Bible reading, 1 Thessalonians 5. Now as to the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you. For you yourselves full, know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. Now that tells a lot in itself. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And Jesus said the same thing. He said people are going to be marrying, giving in marriage, just eating, drinking, just living life up until the time when he comes on the clouds and destruction comes down. And only the ones that are truly right with God, only one, only the ones that are really ready, are going to be taken out of here and saved from this destruction. The worst time in the history of the world. Worst. Worst time. I'm talking about the greatest earthquake in the history of the world. Listen, a quarter of the world dies that day. From my understanding of scripture, a fourth of mankind, a quarter of the world, about two billion people die that day. The greatest earthquake in the history of the world. The beginning of a nuclear World War III. Hundred pound hailstones raining down on the earth. Along with what what people would call meteors, fire and brimstone burning up all the grass all in one day. Quarter of the world. If y'all ain't ready, if y'all ain't if y'all ain't right with Jesus, if y'all ain't right with God. Living for Him? If you haven't given your life fully over to God? You're going to face that 100 pound hailstone is raining down. The worst, the worst earthquake in the history of the world. It's going to be like that, that movie. Um, what was it called? I know a lot of y'all seen it. And it's based on reality what's going to happen um i can't remember the name of it now but there's a movie with john cusack it was like an end time scenario that's what's going to happen it's the worst and people ain't going to be ready it's going to come as a thief in the night. While they are saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them suddenly. Suddenly. Like labor pains upon a woman with child. And they will not escape. Now a couple things about this line. Peace and safety. While they're saying peace and safety, I believe that has something to do with a peace deal that is going on in the Middle East right now. In a couple days, Trump's going to present a peace plan between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And there's a, there's a deal mentioned in the book of Daniel that the man of sin, the Antichrist is going to confirm says says he's going to confirm a covenant for seven years confirm in the Hebrew means, means strengthen 
So if he's strengthening something, a covenant, it means it's already there. And Trump's the one bringing, bringing this to the table, presenting it to the world. Peace deal between the Israelis and the Palestinians. But while they are saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them. Right? Or in this translation, then destruction will come upon them suddenly. Like labor pains upon a woman, woman with child. And if you look up that term, and, and a, like a, do a Bible search, woman with child, or woman in labor, travailing, terms like that, you find out what else happens on this day. It's the resurrection, Gog Magog, destruction of Damascus, destruction of Babylon, the sixth seal earthquake, which is also the Isaiah 24 earthquake. If you want it in detail, go to Isaiah 24, read Isaiah 24. See what's coming upon this world. Read Psalm 18. And see what's coming upon this world in, in addition to that earthquake in the same day. Ain't nobody ready for all that, man. Straight destruction. Nobody's ready for that. But you, brethren, are not in darkness. That the day would overtake you like a thief. For you are the sons of light. And sons of day. We are not of night. Nor of darkness. So then let us not sleep. As others do. But let us be alert. And sober. See if we're watching. If we're not lost in the world, like the rest of the people are, we're paying attention to God and His Word and the things going on in the world and connecting the dots. We're going to see it coming. And a lot of us do. A lot of us see this coming. And it's coming very soon. But most of y'all... I don't want to say y'all, because I don't know who's listening to this, but most of the people aren't going to be paying any attention. Most of the people aren't going to care. Most of the people aren't going to listen. But it's coming. Destruction is coming. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. For those who sleep, they're sleeping at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, see, see night is contrasted with darkness, with evil, with the tribulation time. Day is contrasted with light. We're being saved out of this time. But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath. If we're living for Him, truly following Him, and ready, we're not destined to wrath. He's not going to put us through that. But for obtaining salvation through our Lord, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. So that whether we are awake, alive, or asleep, dead, you will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another. 
just as you also are doing. Right? Keep doing it. Keep building one another up. Keep, keep encouraging one another. The day is near. The time is very near. But we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who diligently labor among you and have charge over you in the Lord and give you instruction. Appreciate those who, who are helping you out, who are helping you learn the scriptures. And that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. We urge you, brethren, admonish the unruly, encourage the faint hearted, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See that no one repays another with evil for evil. But always seek after that which which is good for one another and for all people. We need to be seeking what's good for all people. And helping the weak. Being patient with everyone. Encourage those who are struggling. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. We need to stay in prayer. In everything, give thanks. For this is God's will for you in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Someone's prophesying something, saying this is going to happen, this and this is going to happen. Don't despise it. Study it out and pray about it. But examine everything carefully, like I just said. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame. And I'm not even going to get into the spirit and soul and body thing. That's something I can't even get into right now. I, I need to study it some more myself to fully understand it. May your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you. And he also will bring it to pass. God isn't going to fail in that. God is going to come through and everything written in scripture is going to happen. And the time is now. The time is short. Repent. Turn to Jesus. You don't have a lot of time left. None of us have a lot of time left. We need to be right with God. Now. Ain't no time to be playing around. Faithful is he who calls you, and he will also bring it to pass. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I adjure you by the Lord to have this letter read to all the brethren in Thessalonica and everywhere, actually. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And that's the end of the first letter to the Thessalonians. End of first Thessalonians 5. And God bless you guys.